Friday. Yeah, thanks for the uh, the uh, the well, the well known for getting the shirts off your backs for the neighbors to help. And with the fire department and the police and other people have done this remarkable. But rather than us complimenting and thank thanking each other, I think we should concentrate on what a couple of the people have brought up. A solution to the problem that's permanent and to get the millions of dollars to do it. This is a, a regional problem. I want to mention this to you. I ran just two weeks ago, by accident, I ran across the 1980s state study flooding ritual. To make, it, to make the recommendations brief, brief uh, all of the old bridges in Bridgeville are too small, except for one book 10 years ago. These are just two, two examples. The Culvert Street Bridge, which is uh, 40 to 50% smaller than some of the other bridges. And as you all know, right 200 feet up from the culvert that's behind the little ice cream place is the uh, bridge, excuse me, the bridge over uh, Barga Road that has the center column, collects all the debris that floods uh, Baldwin Street more fire rapidly. I just like to go on here. The state study said all the bridges are too old and too small. The creek channel is also too narrow, too shallow, and not walled in. The tens of thousands of new homes and businesses that were built upstream and up to St. Clair and Bethel Park obviously also contribute greatly to what's been happening. And this study was done in 1980. That development in those two townships has continued for three more decades. Uh, the state study recommended <coughs> widening the openings under all the bridges or replacing them widening the width of the creek bed, encasing and or walling in the creek bed rather than the stream, and reforming the abrupt, there are uh, three abrupt 90 degree angles to block the creek that takes, which means the centrifugal force uh, throws it up over the, the banks. Uh, I don't you know what they are. And uh, again, the solution, uh, the, the uh, more gradual turn stuff that's happened to be made in the creek There's that blade that just said, oh, we need the Army Corps of Engineers, we need tri hydraulic engineers, and uh, 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 in the final analysis, the report says, Bridgeville doesn't have the money to do it, and we can't get it to it. So I think the time has come for the officials and the people in the community to convince the federal, state, county funding agencies that this is a regional problem. This is no, uh, no longer a problem just for people in Bridgeville. I'd like to suggest some to you guys move on. Oh, oh, one other thing. This area right here is uh, <coughs> drive out to block one road. Is that power step? Power step. That's it. Actually, that 50, 50. As a matter of fact, you and I and the guy from the DDP. I didn't go with you. Sure. This, 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 is, this is five years ago. Yeah, I was in oh, I thought you were there. The guy from the D Department of Environmental Protection came down. And I gave him the measurements of all these bridges in Bridgeville. I don't think he believed me. And he and I waited in the creek to measure this one. And he said, these are, it's not just this bridge. This is a two or three of the bridges are terrible. Anyway, there's a 50,000 square feet of area up at Walk and Run on the right that could be used to build as some sort of reservoir or collecting area. Also, I think, Lori, you're also working on another similar idea of having a similar collection area over the uh, park. Is that the Bridgeville Park? I forget. Yeah. Over the Bridgeville Park on the block on the road. But those things have to be aggressively pursued. And one, one, if you guys would move away, I'd just like to show you one of them. That's right. This is in regards to financing. Uh, I, anytime you ask PennDOT or the federal and state government for money for millions, which we need to do this project, they want to know what the returns. All right. And what one of the ideas that I'm suggesting is that's Baldwin Street, and since the study says that McLaughlin Run should be encased in a large concrete uh, conduit, let's say from the Baldwin Street Bridge down to the uh, culvert. One of the possible things that you could look into 
is making Baldwin Street, another central business district in Bridgeville, making Bowerger Road four lanes wide over top of the culvert that I just referred to. And this is just uh, this is just the drawing of that concept. I think by convincing the powers to be who want projects to show off, continue to patient. Look at things at the spot. I would recommend you come to the next planning commission meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. We, I mean, it doesn't look like that, but there is something that is similar to that. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you I have one more, one more comment. Go ahead. Uh, 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 the people in Bridgeville, uh, I'm, probably, I'm probably one of the old people in Bridgeville. You and I. But that's okay. He is pretty old. He is old. At any rate. I've been here a long time, and I think the people in Bridgeville have suffered more than they should have. I remember as a kid, uh, the chemical factory in South Fayette, excuse me, I was executing uh, toxic fumes that we all breathed for four decades at night that no one knew about it. And then the uh, cement company uh, here, a third of the people in town breathe cement dust. Uh, and the uh, I, I was with FEMA uh, in uh, New Orleans after the Katrina hurricane, and they spent a week training us about the dangers of sending people back into sewage saturated homes. The people in this community, excuse me, have had to do that several times. It's unfair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob.